should or can uh, uh, authority, and by that I mean how, how control is enabled, and responsibility, and by that I mean the accountability in the case of failure, always go together. Another thing is that humans become dependent on automation. Uh, the more you use it, the more you depend on it, the more you like it, the more you trust it. <coughs> and then, you know, should you not trust it? How much should you trust it? And the question is, uh, in a court of law, can automation be responsible? Another kind of question uh, relates to this business of human-centered automation. Should humans always be in charge? Well, I would say yes and no, certainly not always if a human's inattentive, uh, if there's really not enough time for a human to respond. And you could also say not when the human does not have the knowledge uh, on how to manage responsibly. So we can look at these big words, um, ability, authority, control, and responsibility, and kind of put them in, in an order where you say, well, you shouldn't have authority unless you have ability. You shouldn't have control unless you have authority, and you shouldn't have responsibility unless you have control. A third question is, um, how smart and how useful can we expect automation and decision support tools to be? The problem is that humans, if they think the computer knows something, they may accede to its judgment when it really doesn't know. It, it really isn't that smart. You know, um, pe people attribute wisdom to computers sometimes when the wisdom isn't warranted. So the question is sort of how much trust should you have in, in these decision support tools? Uh, and another thing is that using a decision support tool takes time. So if you're in an emergency situation, uh, rather than looking at the decision support tool, it takes time and effort to figure out what the decision support tool is trying to tell you, which may be lost time in terms of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Basically, the idea is that automation is not a yes or no type situation. There are degrees, there are shades of automation, all the way from making suggestions to uh, recommending one way to do the task to executing a recommendation if you get approval to offering a limited time if you don't get approval before you do it to ignoring the human altogether. So we have to think through any kind of implementation of automation in terms of a scale. And then in terms of the human being a, a supervisor of automation, a monitor and a supervisor. And of course, instead of the human being a supervisor, the automation can be a supervisor. Maybe there are times when the automation really does need to supervise the human, tweak the human, wake him or her up, get him out of the loop, whatever it is. Another kind of question is, how much information is too much information for a human user to assimilate and utilize in the available time. We know people are slow compared to automation. Uh, we know a lot about how long it takes people to respond. Some people will do the job pretty quickly. Nobody will do it in less than zero time. But uh, most people will do it pretty quickly, but then some people take a very long time so in terms of reliability kinds of planning, uh, for human operators to perform certain functions, particularly in emergency situations, there's a real question of whether you depend on humans for that kind of thing in terms of this kind of data. Daniel talked about teamwork. Um, what does it take for humans and computers to cooperate? And of course, if the human pilot, let's say, doesn't know what the automation is thinking, and is planning to do, there can be big trouble. So one of the sort of standard things that people say is that the humans and the automation have got to be continually reinforcing one another, continually giving feedback. Now, it's hard enough to 
have the human understand what the computer's doing, but have the, having the computer understand what the human's doing and intending is even a bigger challenge, and I think we're a long way from that. Then there's this whole question of the blame game. Sometimes when you have a human automation interaction where things go awry, it's hard to know where the blame should lie. But as I mentioned before, is it way early in the design stage? Is it the installation, the manufacturer, the maintenance, the management, the training, or the ultimate operator? Should there be some kind of better policy to guide the designers and the operators and the management of those highly automated systems? And it seems to me we could do it better by being a little more specific about responsibilities that are contingent on particular situations. 